What's up, crew? Hope you're having a rad day. In today's episode, we are taking a hammer to my helmet. I'm Alan. This is the MTB Alan channel. Fresh mountain bike oriented content every Monday at 5 p.m. Check to see if you're subscribed. If you're not, hit that subscribe button and I'll show up in your feed. You'll be supporting the channel. Hopefully you're here to learn about where I mount my camera, how I mount it there, and how that's worked out for me. If you've seen my previous video, which is available in this link up here, you will know that I start with this tripod mount for a GoPro. These things are available on Amazon. I cut it to fit, and then I use Sugru to mount it to the chin bar of my helmet. Sugru is a moldable glue that hardens into a silicone rubber. Pretty nice, pretty clean looking. You might be wondering why I don't use zip ties like a lot of people do. Personally, I really don't like the way it looks. Also, um, I don't like the idea of adding hard plastic edges to the inside of my helmet because um, I definitely have hit the ground hard enough to compress that chin bar into my face. So, yeah. Which brings us to why I wear a full face helmet anytime I want to film. So aside from my propensity for headbutting the earth, the main reason I'm always wearing a full face helmet to film is minimalism, or more precisely, essentialism. I want these two essentials when I'm filming. I want quality, immersive footage, but I also want to have a minimal impact on my ride experience. I should say that this is all dependent on GoPro's HyperSmooth image stabilization. Before HyperSmooth, it didn't matter where I mounted the camera, it just couldn't compete with gimbal stabilized footage. So until HyperSmooth came out, I was willing to deal with the added hassle that came with wearing the camera bra and managing the gimbal and all of its extra batteries and the weight and all that. Once we had HyperSmooth though, suddenly camera mounted footage started to look a lot more attractive. It promised to hit one of my essentials because if I'm going to be riding, I'm going to be wearing a helmet and if I'm going to be filming, I'm going to be carrying a camera. So mounting it on the helmet meant that it might hit that essential I was looking for of a minimal impact on my ride experience. The only problem was mounting it um, in that Teletubby position or in the peak of the helmet meant that the camera was now elevated quite a bit. And in my opinion, it really took away from some of the immersive feeling that you got from the chest mounted gimbal footage. Uh, it also really exacerbated that GoPro effect by being up high and kind of flattening out the trail. So mounting the camera on the chin bar brings it closer to that chest mounted gimbal angle. It's actually a little bit higher, which I've really grown to like because I feel like it's actually closer to my point of view um, and less like you're sitting in my lap. So that gives me that other essential of that high quality immersive footage. And when compared to the Hero 8 Black on the chest, um, I personally just don't think there's much comparison. So yeah, I'm willing to wear a full face helmet anytime I'm gonna film. I don't feel like it's that big of a trade off. Um, in any case, I've done like climbs of like 2,900 feet, 2,500 feet, and it really hasn't been that bad. The Fox Pro frame breathes pretty dang well. Honestly, if I'm gonna do like a fire road climb or something like that, I just take the helmet off and, and hang it on my handlebar. Some unforeseen benefits that I really dig is that pointing the camera at something I'm interested in means looking at it. So unlike the chest mounted camera, I don't have to point my nipples at whatever I'm interested in. <laughs> it's also really nice to be able to take the helmet off and then use it as a kind of camera rig to film my buddies when they're doing cool stuff. Um, just in general, it's nice to capture all the other cool stuff that happens around the ride. And if you're a YouTuber like me or just want to tell a story, 
it's nice to have all that additional footage to tie different rides together. So if you're digging this video, finding it useful, hit the like button and let me know. And if you get to the end of the video and there's some questions that you still have, please hit me up in the comments. I get to all the comments. I respond to all the comments. All right, let's talk durability. This is the main question I get asked about this setup. So as you already know, I'm really good at smashing my face into the ground. So this mount has taken numerous hits. And it has come through all of those without, without a mark, unaffected. That being said, I'm gonna show you what it takes to actually break this. So here I'm using a hammer, a metal hammer to hit this thing. First hit does just fine. And then I hit it a lot harder and then it broke. To be clear, this is not a realistic trail type test. I just wanted to show you how hard you have to hit this thing to break it. In most cases, you're gonna be hitting dirt and your camera or your cage is gonna be hitting the ground first. And if this thing gets hit that hard with something as hard as a hammer, like a boulder, um, you'll be dealing with more serious problems than a, a damaged Sugru mount. Hope that never happens to you. So the only real con with the Sugru method is that once it's on there, it's on there. Uh, so if you're not filming and you don't wanna have the mount on there, when you're not filming, you can't really take it off. And then when it's time to replace your helmet, you gotta do the whole setup again. It's actually not that hard to do once you do it the first time, but in the event that you don't want that level of permanency, we're gonna look at this piece of kit. So this is the Telesin. Telesin mount. I got it on Amazon. Uh, they're not sponsoring me or anything like that. Um, but I heard the concerns of people saying like, you know, once it's on there, you can't take it on. So I figured I would get this thing. We'd try it out. Tony from the Outsider MTB channel, he helped me try this out. Um, he put it on. Um, so we've got some comparative footage. You can see it looks just the same. There was no noise. It didn't seem to move around and the stabilization works just about like it does with the Sugru mount. It goes on pretty dang easily. Uh, I hadn't really planned to do this with Tony, just did it at the last minute. Um, the straps are kind of silky, they're kind of soft, so I think Tony just said like this was just kind of hitting him in the mouth, so you know, you could just kind of find a way to tie these up or cut them and then like uh, burn the end so that they don't fray but it works. Two of the things that really kind of concern me about this is like this point right here. That kind of worries me a little bit. You've also got these buckles on the inside which are kind of hard, hard plastic. So if this thing gets pushed into your mouth, that uh, might not be the greatest thing. The other maybe somewhat minor thing that I would, would worry about is because this isn't permanent like the Sugru mount, I wouldn't always have confidence that my camera angle is is right with the sugru mount um, it, because it's you know so uh, permanent i can put a mark on there and then a mark on my uh, gopro and just line that up and i know with full confidence that my angle is good and if the thing gets hit if it gets tapped i feel like if that were to happen with the telesin um, i wouldn't know if this was like up or down but it might be fine. It just means you gotta check your footage a little bit more often, which kind of gets, again, back to that essentialist thing where I, I just wanna like turn it on and go. I don't wanna think too much about the camera. So there you have it, the Sugru mount, nice and clean. I wear a full face helmet all the time. I deal with it, I don't mind. If you don't want the full permanence of the Sugru mounted approach, you can use the Telesin. Seems to work pretty damn well. You just have to kind of deal with maybe having your angle in the wrong place and maybe getting poked by this thing and maybe getting cut by these things and then having these things tickle your mouth. Hope you dug this video. If you found it useful, hit that like button. Hit me with any questions in the comments. Check to see if you're subscribed. If you're not, hit the subscribe button and I will see you next week. Peace.